Hey everybody, Grant Dermody coming at you from Seattle, um, continuing on with tongue blocking. This time we're going to get into some Chicago blues rhythms and grooves and laying things down solid that way. So I want to remind you that I am playing a key of A Marine Band, straight out of the box, no modifications. And I want to ask you please to subscribe, to like, to share. All of that helps the algorithm, helps my channel, helps me, and I'm grateful for it, and I thank you. So look, here's the deal. If you are, are playing in a blues ensemble of some sort, um, and you're, especially if you're playing in an acoustic ensemble, let's say it's just you and a guitar player, you need to be able to lay down a strong, solid groove when the guitar player solos. Otherwise, guitar players are going to do what they always do. They're going to solo and, pl and play rhythm at the same time, in which case they don't need you. So you need to be able to lay it down, lay it down solid, lay something solid down that they can solo over, that they can trust will be there. That's a big, that's a big part of it. Now, it can be argued that if you're in a Chicago-style blues band with uh, bass, drums, piano, rhythm, guitar, all of those instruments are laying a solid groove down um, while the guitar player is soloing so that you don't have to. But I disagree with that frame of thinking, way of thinking. I think it's, um, I think if you are a member of a band, then you ought to be able to lay down what the band is doing at any time, in which case you need to know how to play rhythm. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about that kind of Chicago swing thing, that Chicago vamp. So it starts off on a two-hole draw, and what I'm going to do is tongue block the two-hole draw and then get the chord that follows it. Okay, so what I'm doing there is I'm tongue slapping that two-hole draw and then playing a chord that follows. Now, the way that you need to play it so that it swings is that the chord that follows the single note has to be shorter and softer than the single note itself. It can't be like this. Because that doesn't swing, and it's all the same volume. So... So the image that I use is the hi-hat on a drum set. So it's that that's what the chord does. It's got that part. Okay? So if I was going to continue that, what I'm going to do is two draw, three draw, four draw, five draw. That's a really great thing to practice. Slow down, it sounds like this. Okay, so again, the, sing the chord that follows the single note has to be shorter and softer. And a really good way to practice that is just to hang out on one note. So this bass line that I'm showing you is, in musical terms, you would call it a 1-3-5 flat 7 bass line. And it's basically just the note of the notes of the E dominant chord, the E blues chord, which are E, G sharp, B, and D, arpeggiated, or played one note at a time. Broken apart is another way to say that. So rather than playing the chord like this, I'm playing it one note at a time. And I'm adding some chords in between. Okay, so not, normally I would do that four times over a 12-bar blues form. And I'll, I'm not going to explain how to do all the rest of it right now. I'm just going to play it for you. And if you want to play along, go ahead. Those of you that are more high, intermediate, and advanced harmonica players or shouldn't you know, have any problem with that. You can play along. 
Those of you that are more beginners, don't worry. More instruction is coming on this, okay? So I'll just play, I'll just kind of show you the whole thing in context so you kind of know where we're going. same technique is used in the beginning part of Walter's Boogie. Okay, so Walter Boogie start, Walter's Boogie starts off like this without the intro. That's how he provides the backbeat. That's how he gets things going. If he plays it by itself, it sounds great. When he plays it with a band that's locked in with him, it sounds even better. So Walter's Boogie, for those of you that are not familiar, is an instrumental piece by Walter Horton, who is my favorite Chicago blues harmonica player. And you can find a great recording of that tune on his record called Can't Keep Loving You. And it's in the key of E on an A harmonica. Okay. So there you go. That's kind of the Chicago vamp thing. That's how you put it into a bass line, into a groove. There's a whole bunch of stuff I just threw at you. So have fun with it. Please share, please like, please, please subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye.